Okay, so this is going to be our second video in uh, this Action Script 3 Basics uh, updated edition. And uh, this one I'm just going to call Staging and Tweening. That'll be uh, two of the main things that we're doing here. And of course, there's more videos to follow, but uh, I haven't created them yet. Uh, dive into examples, and you can go ahead and open up this uh, tweening and staging file. Of course, yours, yours will already have the code in it, but uh, you can just delete that out and start from scratch, or you can work off your own document. Um, what you're looking at now is this uh, same moon that we had uh, from the previous tutorial, although uh, actually it's not identical because this one, if you double click inside of it, uh, it doesn't have that animation that we had in there before. We're going to get rid of that. So again, it's double click once into it. You've just got that same artwork again. And then... I've got a, uh, a backdrop here, which I have already given an instance name of backdrop. Uh, don't forget to uh, do that on your own end if you're working with some other piece of uh, artwork. And then I've got uh, some stars right here. Again, an instance name of stars. And this too has that uh, instance name of moon. So we are ready to roll in terms of making these guys do something. And what will we do this time around? Uh, well, we are going to play a little bit uh, with the uh, some of the stage properties. Uh, at any time, we can find out uh, the stage width or height, and we can uh, work a little bit of relatively simple mathematics on that and uh, make our objects uh, adhere to different positions based on it. And then we will also, actually the first thing we'll do is we'll set up a, um, a scripted uh, motion tween, and of course in the last part, uh, part one, we saw uh, how, how would you do a tween uh, just on the timeline, but uh, to get ever fancier, we can uh, script that. So select that blank keyframe over here and hit F9. We'll have this uh, window floating out here. Let me kind of move that off to the side. And there we go. That should give me plenty of space. Okay, uh, first thing that we're going to do here is write import.fl transitions and when you guys look through the uh, the help documents or just uh, if, you, if you google uh, looking for code for whatever it is a lot of times you'll see these um, import statements in here and they basically just add some extra functionality uh, that is not uh, getting run by the compiler by default and these um, stars right here at the end are just we're basically just saying hey you know what <clears throat> Bring us all, bring us in all the code that you know about it. Um, versus, uh, you can be a little bit more specific about just um, only bringing in certain transitions, but uh, it's not going to add really anything significant to the size of this file. To just go ahead and say, yeah, give us everything you got. Uh, another thing I'm going to do early on here is set the stage scale mode, and I'm going to make this equal to no scale. Okay. And then I'm going to also come down here and write stage.align and make this equal to um, TL, which stands for top left. And I can demonstrate that uh, what it's doing better than I can probably explain it. I'm going to publish this really quick. And if I were to move or expand out the size of the state or the SWF file, by just grabbing the bottom left here, you can see that um, all the elements that I have on here are staying. Um, up in the top left corner okay if I were to change this to just T okay uh, then as I kind of move this out you can see that it, the, the objects are staying um, just up to the top but they're centering uh, and of course you can imagine that TL, TR which would be top right would move all the objects over here and the same thing applies for um, uh, BL bottom left and um, B and then just um, BR uh, I usually go with um, uh, T or, or well for the, the a lot of the files I have in cartoonsmart.com they're, they're centered up on the page um, so uh, the Swift is embedded to take up a hundred percent of the horizontal space but when you have it at T like that it's always gonna be centered so I have it for T uh, for this example though what we'll do is we'll, we'll keep this at um, top left and later on, what I'll end up doing is making, like, say, this background um, take up the entire width of the stage. So if it's kind of stuck to the to the left side, then we're just expanding out uh, the width of it to the right. And uh, this no scale, I didn't really explain that, but um, it's just when we make the size of the the stage bigger, it's um, it's not going to uh, affect the scaling. Um, of uh, any of those objects and I, I'm pretty sure by default they're not going to scale up anyway let me just get rid of that and make sure I'm 
Yeah, okay. But um, I, I just tend to throw that in there anyway. Okay, so we've got that uh, ready to go. Variable, we're gonna start off by typing var. It stands for variable. And we're gonna give this a name of our choosing. I'm just gonna call it start point. After that, uh, do a colon, and then you just need to specify what kind of variable that's gonna be. Uh, in this case, it's just gonna be a number. And uh, we could make this uh, just equal to say 600. All right, the stage size of this right now is 600. So if we were to make the uh, value of moon dot y equal to start point, that would be putting this moon, uh, well, pretty much right about where it almost is right now. Let's see, it's at a y of 600. So we can just set it like that, but uh, that doesn't really, <laughs> Uh, prove we've done anything. So let's move it over here for right now and that way when we uh, test this in just a moment We can see that it actually did do something. So now we'll come down here right moon dot y equals start point and Publish it out. Okay. Uh, well our moon's kind of gone But if we pull this down sure enough, it's uh, it is hiding back down that way uh, what I want to do is actually get rid of this because we don't really need it, need it uh, with what we're going to do in just a moment, which is to create a, a scripted motion tween, and we'll use that start point within that. So again, we're going to type var, and uh, let's write over here. Um, uh, let's just call this variable moon tween. All right, it's pretty descriptive. And do a semi, or I'm sorry, colon. Uh, type tween, say equals new tween, and then. Uh, inside of these parentheses that we're about to type, uh, we're going to go and set a bunch of parameters for it. If you want to, though, you could um, go ahead and just finish off your, your closing parentheses right there and just do a closing um, semicolon for it. Uh, you're going to have to do it anyway. But um, let's uh, now put in each one of these parameters. So the first thing we're going to type is moon, all right? And that specifies that the object we're going to be moving around with this motion tween is that moon instance name. Okay, do a comma. And uh, probably the only tricky part here is that this um, next parameter is uh, always going to have quotes around it like this. So um, do um, your quotes and then y. And of course, that's just one of our properties that we looked at in the first tutorial. So all those things like uh, y, x, rotation, uh, scale x, scale y. Uh, any one of those things could go in there. We're just using y. Add another comma. And we're going to type regular. This should change color. And we're going to put in here ease out. This has to do with those uh, easing transitions we have over here. Ease out just means it's the moon is going to slow down uh, when it gets toward the end of the animation. Uh, you could also do ease in or ease in out. Ease in out. Uh, let's just go with ease out. And uh, our next thing is going to be where we actually get to use this um, start point. Of course, this could also be just any old number in here but we might as well make use of that variable. Uh, so it's gonna be uh, 600, and then let's have uh, it end at 100, okay? And um, keep in mind too that uh, your, your uh, zero point for Y is up here in this, uh, well, along the top line okay, over here. So 600 is gonna start the moon down here, and then it's gonna move slow, or slow down to move right to about uh, there or so. And then finally, uh, we get to choose uh, how long it's gonna to take to get from you know, the first point to the second point. So in this case, I'm gonna set this to be 60, and then I'm gonna write false right here. And uh, the, the, the true or false has to do with whether or not we're going to um, measure time in uh, seconds or in frames. So by putting false right there, we're going to be using uh, 60 frames, which is just basically two seconds. And of course, your other option here would just be to write something like uh, two and then true, which would give you the same thing. But I'll go with frames. All right, so let's uh, publish this guy out and see what happens. Okay, so he, Moon, uh, yeah, looks like it's it's working just fine. Uh, let's move it off to the uh, side a little bit here. Okay, now we can see that, uh, sure enough, comes up uh, like so. Let's jump back down here. And let me put a little note in here uh, that just says, um, false equals using frames. Let's take this. Okay, 
Um, one thing I'm, I've, I've been noticing too is that uh, I haven't been getting any code hinting and uh, I, I was reading before that uh, CS5 has some issues with uh, code hinting not showing up which is kind of, kind of ironic.